welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today I'm making something a bit random just because I feel like it. So let's get on with it. When I made my moon mirror piece fairly recently, I mentioned that you could make a tray in a similar way. And that's what I'm going to do today. But rather than going the easy route and making a circular tray, I'm going for something a little bit more spooky. And as I think I said when I was making the moon themed pieces, sometimes I just get a bit of an idea in my head and I have to run with it. And at the moment I've got a bit of a vampire kick going on, as you might have noticed from some of my recent videos. So today's um, tray, I forgot what I was going to make then for a moment. Today's tray is going to be coffin shaped because, well, that's got to be suitably spooky, hasn't it? I have begun this time with some squared paper. This is some graph paper. We've been doing lots and lots of planning regarding the house and um, it was handy. So I've used this because it makes drawing a slightly complicated shape that little bit easier. You don't have to measure everything. And what I've actually done is I've made a little template. Now I'm not 100% sure how big this is actually going to be. I just did it by squares. Now this is actually um, 10 millimeters wide at the narrower points and that means it is about 18 millimeters at the widest point and then that is 30 millimeters the other direction which if I turn my ruler over that is just under an inch and a quarter by about three quarters of an inch but you can do it any size that you want as I say I did this based upon the squares and something that looked about right no more complicated than that so that is my template and what I'm going to do to make this is I'm going to start off with a mirrored interior that is going to be my um, sort of talking point and I have drawn that onto the reverse of some mirror card and there I have my mirrored interior. It's a bit beaten up because it's some leftover mirror card, it's not a brand new sheet but I don't mind because obviously I'll be putting something on the um, tray at some point and I can use it to cover up the significant scratch I've got there. So that is my starting point which is a, um, a nice bit of mirror card and then I'm using some black cardstock which is this. I'm not sure what the weight is, it's just some that I buy um, randomly. This was bought as craft cardstock, it is very nice, it's smooth, it's a reasonable weight. I'm thinking it's probably somewhere around about 160 GSM because it feels fairly um, similar to the white that I put through my printer and I know what that is. So I'm going to be using that to do the edging and I will be using some to back this once it's all put together. So, next step is putting the edging around the outside. To make my um, lip around the outside of the tray, I have got a piece of the black cardstock, a strip that I've cut. Now the strip is about four millimeters in deep, um, in depth, which means it's going to be quite a deep tray, but. You can go for whatever you want. I like the trays that have got a slightly deeper side because it actually looks like you can put things on there and keep them in place. Um, that is um, just over 
a sixteenth of an inch. I did it by eye. I cut it with my paper trimmer, but I sort of um, eyeballed it. I've measured it since and been like, oh, that's what I went for. It's no more complicated than that. So I am going to glue this around the outside. It's going to be go around the outside of the um, base, not onto the mirrored front. So I'm going to apply a small quantity of glue onto the um, very tiny head, edge here. And this is one of these where there's a lot of clearing up of glue to be done. Now you can start wherever you want, wherever you decide you want your um, my wherever you, you decide you want your join to be. I've gone for one of the long sides where I've got that little bit of a um, gap on the little bit of a gap, a little bit of a scratch on the mirror side. And all that I'm doing is I am waiting for this glue to take hold. Now, we're actually in the middle of a heat wave at the moment here in the UK. We probably won't be by the time this video actually goes up because I am still making them in advance because there is going to come a time where I'm not going to have anywhere to work for a few weeks. So I've got to try and um, ensure I've got um, enough videos to keep you all occupied. And what I found is that this glue, strangely, doesn't dry as quick on really hot days. Don't know why. Now the next thing I need is my paper piercer, my little pokey tool here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my little ruler and I'm going to just turn this and where it is going to go around the corner I'm going to try and get a little um, fold in the right place. Now, could have been a little bit closer, but I think it's going to work. And what that means is I just end up with um, sharper corners. And sharper corners do obviously make the piece look better. I'm going to fold it back on itself and I'm going to apply some of this glue again. Try and take off the excess in advance and um, just line this up with the bottom. As I've said, this is one of these where you have to take your time. Um, you know, anything where there's bits that have got to dry, it takes a while. And um, this is one of those moments. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on with this. I'm going to do it um, off camera, but I will come back to show you how I deal with the um, end bit, um, just because it's going to take a while and um, I need to turn the fan back on and we don't want that going in the background on the video now, do we? I have got all but the last little bit um, stuck into place and I have cut the strip down so that I've got um, four or five millimetres that overlap because I do want it to overlap a fair way just to make sure that it actually stays um, stuck in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the glue to this last open edge and I'm 
going to get some more glue onto my cocktail stick so that I can, as um, I fold it down, get this glue onto all of the um, overlapped bit. Now this is a bit where you have to actually um, get your fingers in a bit more than you might do normally or what you can do is you can use a pair of tweezers to push those two pieces together. So I'm going to hold that together with the tweezers because of the way they are. I think they're something like reverse action. And then I'm going to get the glue from on the outside. And what I've now got is I've got my basic mirror tray. Now you could leave it like this if you so wished. And then you would just have the tray like that. I'm going to put another piece onto the back simply because I want to make sure that it's nice and secure. So I'm going to use this strip that I've got here and I am going to um, glue it down something like so and then I will trim around it once it is securely glued. So I'm going to get quite a bit of my glue this time because we just want to make sure that it's all nice and um, stuck. And I am making especially sure that the edges of the um, the bit that I've just stuck around the outside have got glue on them. And I'm just going to stick that against one of the straight edges, like so. And um, I'm going to let that to dry. So um, I'll be back in a moment and um, we'll finish this off. I trimmed the um, black card that I stuck my tray onto just with a pair of scissors. You could do it with a craft knife if you prefer, but um, I felt able to get a good enough finish with the scissors. It's up to you. It's one of these things. Some people like using scissors, others don't. And I'm pretty pleased with how it's looking. Now what I do want to do is I've got a paint marker in silver. This is um, an oil based paint and so is nicely opaque and I did give it a shake earlier so hopefully it will work okay. And what I want to do is I just want to run around the very top edge of the tray like so just to give it that little finishing touch. Now because it's oil paint it will take a moment to dry you know it's not an alcohol marker so I'm just going to be careful not to smudge it as I lift it up and you can see that it just adds a little bit of detail and that's the tray. Now, as I said, you could do this in any shape you wanted. I've gone for the coffin shape because spooky, but anything goes. Obviously, the simplest one is a circle. You do your circle, you put stuff around, as I did with the mirror video, you make a tray. But if you can do a shape in the first place, as long as you can bend your rim material around it, you can turn it into a tray. And um, then it can fit into any scene. And you can use any material, you don't have to go with black. I just went with black because, well, it sort of suits how I do things. Now, to follow on from this, I'm actually going to make a little bit of something to go on the tray. So um, I'll be right back. Now I am aiming to make a bottle to stand on the tray. Quite some time ago now I bought these little um, decanters which are 
um, two-tone resin. The bottom is red and then the top is clear. And I could use one of those on there. If I bring Grandmama in, yes, she's still waiting her make under, you can see that they are a good size for 1 12th scale. Bigger size decanters, but, you know, bottles come in all shapes and sizes. And if I bring the tray back in, Yes, it could stand on there, but that'd be too easy. I'm going to try and make something myself. And to do that, the main thing I'm going to use is one of these oval drop pearls. Now, these are just a plastic bead and they come in a sort of um, aurora, aurora borealis effect. They've got that um, shimmer on the outside. So I'm going to be using that one of those and I'm also going to be using a little um, three millimeter pearl um, that's going to be my stopper and then I've got a little metal piece that I'm going to put in between. Now what I've already done with my um, drop pearl is I have put some glue in the bottom end to stop it off because I'm going to have a go at filling it. So all I want to do is I want to put a bit of colour into the middle so that um, it looks like there's something in the bottle. So I'm going to mix some UV resin with um, a little bit of colouring and um, if it works we're going to try and get it into the bottle. Now what I did to try and get a bit of colour inside of this bead was I mixed together some UV resin with some red resin dye. I just did that on a little scrap of card because I didn't need to do more than a drop. And then I had to um, insert it. Now I inserted it using a piece of wire and sort of painted it around the outside. But for some reason, even though I was pulling it down, I've got a bit of a um, bare patch. Now, hopefully you can see that there's color in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little label on it. Now my label, which reads blood, is just made out of um, printer paper. And I've colored it with my distress marker and I wrote on it with a archival quality pen. Um, this is waterproof, so it doesn't um, it doesn't react with the ink from the marker. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back of my little label and I'm going to try and get it all over and then I'm going to put this at the approximately the level where there is the problem and I'm just going to shape it round and that is the label done. Now you could make the label more complicated you know you could work it out in Photoshop or something like that and it could be a proper little label but this is just a scrappy piece that I've put together. Now the next piece I've got is this little leaf piece which is a metal um, jewellery finding. This is a spacer bead or a bead cap I'm not sure which. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that upside down. I'm going to take my main bead and I'm going to put a blob of glue on the top of it and then I'm just going to put this onto there now I'm using my usual acrylic glue um, you may prefer to use super glue or something else 
I could do this with the resin if I wanted, but um, I'm not such a big fan of resin that I keep using it and using it and using it. Now I just need to let this dry for a while before I finish it off and um, I'll be right back. Now I think my glue has dried enough that I can handle this and what I've done is I've just put it into my tweezers um, just to make it easier and hopefully so you can see it on camera. And in my other set of tweezers I've got one of the black um, pearls. Now I have put some glue into the one end of that just so that it doesn't look quite so much like a hole once it's put onto the um, top of the bottle and um, I'm going to apply glue, I've just applied glue to the other side while I'm talking and I'm going to put this onto the top of there and let go. Now if I get my little um, tidying piece, no, and I'm knocking everything every which way, that is still not glued, oh, right, I think I'm going to have to settle for the fact that I'm going to have glue showing on this one. I've got the pieces in place. As you can see I've got my little blood bottle. I'm going to let this dry. Um, it will go off, it's just taking a while. Um, I think I'm going to go off before the um, glue does at the moment. And then I'm going to put them into place on my tray. The glue has finally gone off enough that I can actually do something with this and so I am going to attach my bottle of blood to my little tray. Now I've got my glue just out of sight and I'm going to put a good blob on the bottom. Um, it's gone quite, quite tacky now so hopefully we will be okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this down into place where I want it to be and if necessary support it until it actually sticks. Um, I think it's going to work quite well. Obviously you wouldn't just put a bottle on here, you could put anything. Now I'm not saying that this bottle which is labelled blood is actual blood. It could be a perfume bottle. This is a great way to make perfume bottles, beads, jewellery findings. The um, possibilities are endless. You'll find lots and lots of inspiration out there. There's probably videos, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it is just a case of finding pieces that you like and mixing them together. Um, obviously it could do with some more bits on the tray. Um, I could add some miniature jewellery made with some more little tiny beads. Um, of course I could cheat and I could use something that I've bought. But it's one of those things where it's up to you. At the moment, I don't know where I'm going to put this piece, so I'm not going to worry too much about what else goes on there. Instead, I'm going to um, let it dry properly and um, just be happy that I've made a piece that's been going around in my head for a while now. So here we have my little coffin tray and um, bottle of blood. A simple little piece but um, a nice little detail nonetheless. If you've enjoyed this video please like, comment or subscribe. It really helps the channel and if you subscribe consider ringing that notification bell. It will let you know when I put up a new video. I put a video up most weeks 
normally on a Friday, but I don't promise anything because real life can get in the way. But that said, until next time, bye.